everybody, my name is Chris Groggins, and I'm co-founder and partner of eSports Development and Growth Enterprise, also known as Edge Consulting, and I want to thank you for tuning in to part one of our History of eSports Workshop. Today we'll be talking about eSports and early gaming, but more specifically, this video will be associated with slides one through nine of your materials, will help you better understand the history of gaming, and help explain the beginning stages of the eSports industry. So we'll start off with some general gaming history and start in the early 1900s, actually as early as 1905. In the early 1900s, something called a penny arcade was popularized and made gaming more mainstream. These penny arcades consisted of mechanical machines rather than electronic arcade machines that only cost a penny or a nickel. Some of these machines featured short movies or pictures, fortune telling, and slots. People would flock to the penny arcades to spend their spare change and for entertainment. Shortly after penny arcades, pinball became hugely popular in the United States, especially in major cities. Kids were flocking after school to these arcades to spend their spare change and to hopefully beat their friends at the game of pinball. But pinball was short-lived in major cities because it was quickly outlawed. People thought that kids spending their spare change after school was like gambling, and there might have been ties to the mob. I know it might feel like we just rushed through the pre-video game history, but I want to fast forward to the video game history because this is a video game and esports workshop. The video game console market started in 1972 when the Magnavox Odyssey hit the shelves. The Magnavox Odyssey featured basic graphics and screen overlays for different types of games and didn't sell very well in the United States. But the Magnavox Odyssey made a major impact on the gaming industry because it popularized the tennis game genre. Speaking of tennis games, shortly after the Magnavox Odyssey popularized the genre, Atari developed Pong and it swept the nation. This led to the golden era of arcades from 1977 to 1983, which featured titles that you might be familiar with, such as Asteroids, Space Invaders, Galaga, Centipede, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and many more. Capitalizing on the golden era of the arcades, Atari launched the Atari 2600, which enabled gamers to take their favorite arcade games and bring them into their living rooms. This featured better graphics than the Magnavox Odyssey did in the early 70s and allowed people to play their favorite titles that they had been playing for years in the arcade. But at the beginning of the golden era of the arcades in 1977, there was a small market crash for many game developers. This was due to oversaturation of the gaming market because of how popular Pong and the other tennis games had become. There were hundreds of different variations of the Pong title, but ultimately led to several game developers leaving the market. Fortunate for the gaming industry, Magnavox and Atari both survived this small market crash in 77. At the end of the golden era of the arcade in 1983, we saw another market crash. Historians believe that this market crash of the video game industry in the United States was due to several different reasons. One, because of the downfall of Atari. Two, because of poorly designed games. Three, again, because of oversaturation of the market and low sales due to that oversaturation. And then four, because home computers had become widely popular. You can now buy a computer and not only get your work done on it, but you could also play games. The gaming and console market crash in the United States lasted from 1983 to 1985, but in 1985, Sega and Nintendo entered the United States market and helped revive the gaming industry overall. Throughout all of these games being developed and the console wars that were happening, there was also competition starting to form, not only in the arcades, but small localized tournaments that were being organized by gaming enthusiasts. For example, the first gaming tournament was in 1972 and was called the Intergalactic Space War Olympics. This was hosted at Stanford University and had about 24 participants. The person that won the tournament got a one-year subscription to Rolling Stone magazine. Fast forward from 1972 to 1980, and we see the Space Invaders Championship. This was a huge national tournament that featured tournaments all around the country. This was one of the first major LAN events in the United States, and the winner of the entire thing won their own arcade cabinet. Due to the success of the Space Invaders Championship and how popular gaming had become in the United States, we saw several other tournaments starting to pop up around the country. For example, in 1981, the Atari $50,000 World Championship was hosted, but ultimately was a failure because they spent over $100,000 on marketing for the event, but had less than 200 people show up for the actual gaming tournament. But thankfully, we saw successful esports or gaming tournaments hosted later in the 90s with the Nintendo World Championships in 1990 and the Red Annihilation Tournament in 1997. Due to the success of these gaming and esports tournaments, we started to see the creation of tournament organizers in the late 90s. For example, the Cyber Athlete Professional League, or CPL, was formed in 1997 and was really the pioneer for tournament organization. 
Later in the early 2000s, we saw several different entities popping up to organize events all around the world. Two of these major global organizers in the early 2000s were the World Cyber Games, or WCG, which was founded in 2000, and the Electronic Sports World Convention, which was created in 2003. We also saw a major tournament organizer known as Major League Gaming, or MLG, hit the market in 2002, and this really helped improve the competitive spectator experience. MLG wanted to produce esports-related content and have it be available to anyone around the world at any given time. Okay, time to recap. We started with early gaming history, but quickly fast-forwarded to the history of consoles. Consoles then led to the golden era of the arcade, but unfortunately we had to talk about the gaming crash of 1977, but the bigger one in 1983. But the market was revived shortly after in 1985, and throughout all of this, organized gaming tournaments were being held all around the United States. Some of them extremely successful, some of them being maybe a little bit of a failure. But these tournaments, both successful and unsuccessful, led to tournament organizers being created in the late 90s, which will lead us into the present esports industry in the next section. So I want to thank you for tuning in to part one of the History of Esports Workshop. We look forward to seeing you in the next part of our workshop where Joey will be talking about esports from the mid-2000s on.